it's interesting. Some NHL teams still talk about character when looking at prospects in the draft. And some just don't care at all. They look at the numbers, that's it. That's what the analytics movement is about, right? Just the numbers. Don't fall for the narratives. Look at the results. But Canadian teams and fans still talk about wanting players with grit and character. You look at the Flames' recent trade, for example, back to the deadline last year, Curtis Lazar. Why in the world did they pick him up? For a guy that went in the first round, he hardly played. He was healthy scratched. He was buried on the fourth line. So why in the world would the Flames pick him up? It's not because of the results. It's because he's a known leader with quality character. The question is, as a parent, I don't know that I see a lot of kids with that prototypical Canadian character that we see in Lazar or players like him. Yes, there's lots of talented kids, but are there the kinds of people that we make icons of this country? And whose job is it to teach these kids what it means to be not just a hockey player, but a Canadian hockey player? Is that our job as parents? Is it coaches' jobs? Is it the people running Hockey Canada? Ever since I was younger, I've grown up, grown up on hockey, and it's been in my life because of my dad. And ever since I was young, I've always loved it. I never wanted to do anything other than that. I can't imagine myself not playing hockey when I'm older. Going to the rink every day, it's the best feeling in the world. He's a shot blocker, um, defensive defenseman. Played a long career, so up and down to the start. But at the end, he stayed and had a good finish of his career, which is pretty cool because no guys play, not many guys play as many games he did, so. Jeff Finley played 708 career games in the NHL with six different teams. He is currently the chief amateur scout for the Detroit Red Wings. I've tried to teach them how to learn how to love the game, how to look forward to going to the rink every day, all the great things about the game, um, and get them to realize the great things about the game. When they do that, then they'll start to learn how to compete harder, how to push themselves, you know, working to make themselves better. I just think he's been there, he knows what it takes, so I should soak up anything that he gives me, because if I want to make it, he knows how to. But moving on in the future, playing pro, I don't really feel pressured, I just feel more like I want it. And I know he wants it for me, but I could care less, so I just want it for myself. For most young hockey players, the first step towards the NHL is playing junior hockey. In Western Canada, the top junior league is the WHL. Players are drafted into the WHL during their second season of Bantam hockey when they are turning 15. Ever since I was younger, I've known about the WHL. Like, I'd love to get drafted, it would be awesome. I'd be very excited, but if, say I don't get drafted, I can still earn myself a spot if I keep improving. I'm uh, looking very closely at Jeff Finley. He's a Western League type player. Uh, he has the size. He uh, sees the game well. And uh, as a family comes from a hockey background, they understand some of the commitments are required to be successful. Playing for the Kona Rockets would definitely be a dream come true. I've grown up around them and 
When I was young, my dad was the assistant coach. He coached uh, Jamie Benn, Tyler Myers, Tyson Berry, Luke Shan. They went all the way to the Memorial Cup Finals and lost in double overtime. Um, and I think it was a, a big learning block for him in his life. He has a lot of good qualities to go somewhere in hockey, wherever that takes him, we'll see. But he has size going for him. Um, he thinks the game well and he plays center. So big centermen are hard to come by. Those are some of the things he has going for him. After a long pro career playing with the likes of Chris Pronger, Al McInnes, and even Wayne Gretzky, Jeff Finley is now the head amateur scout for the Detroit Red Wings. It's his job to know who the best up and coming amateur players are, not just in Western Canada, but in the whole world. When I walk into an arena to watch a junior game and I see a big guy, right away my, I'm drawn to that guy. I'm, I'm intrigued and I'm hoping that I, he shows me something that I like. Big players have an advantage as pros and we're looking for big, strong game. Little guys can survive, but the game is about big players. He'd be a draft today if, the, if they were to have the draft, just from the word that I've got from, from other scouts in the Western Hockey League that I've talked to. And then how high he goes, I think, will just determine, be determined on how his season goes. Jack is currently playing at the highest level of minor hockey for Bantam H players on the Kelowna Tier 1 team. Most of his teammates are second-year players and eligible for the WHL draft. But being a year younger, Jack will have to wait a year before he can be drafted. It was my first year Bantam, first year hitting. I started off having a great season. I was scared, like I was still just getting into the season and I wanted to fit in with all the guys. So I was trying my hardest, everybody was. I think when I got the assistant captain, some of the second years were pretty mad because, you know, it's their second year Bantam. But Ken gave it to me because he wanted me to be a leader with the first year so that everybody could fit in. As I've grown up, my dad, he drops me off and says, don't be dumb and be a leader. And you know, I've tried to be like a leader my whole life. I say if somebody was getting bullied or something like that, stick up for them and you want to be the leader, not the follower. And people respect you more for that. Jack's team is preparing for an elimination game against their cross-region rivals in Kamloops with a ride to the provincial tournament on the line. This is February, right? Here we go. It's been a long, long year. But when we were talking before the game on Saturday about how it's just another game, that's how you got to look at it. You can't build it up bigger than it is. You really, believe it or not, have an advantage because Kamloops is supposed to win now. It's tough to carry that around with you when you're supposed to win. So it's been a, it's been a real treat actually for me, your age group. It's been a lot of fun. Let's not have it end right here. We gotta be serious when we get up there. I know you will be, but not too serious. It's just a freaking game. Just like all the rest of them. So bus leaves at 9.15, loads at nine, and we go get them. Kamloops and Kelowna, the two biggest cities in the interior, and only a two hour drive apart have had a long, bitter rivalry that extends through every level of minor hockey. But this time, it's not just bragging rights that are on the line, but keeping their season alive. On the bus, everybody was pretty focused. We were just thinking of what we have to do for the game, how the team can win, that you never want to think of anything bad, you never want to have negative thoughts. 
Kamloops is a little bit of a, of a blue collar town overall, and I think that that's the that's the kind of hockey that that the people like to see, both with you know with the Blazers and Major Junior, but with minor hockey as well. They want to see kids that work hard. They want to see kids that, that care, kids that are committed. So let's have a pact here. The next three hours is about everybody in this room and nobody else. Nobody else. It's just us. It's not about your dad's expectations. Don't be afraid of it. Enjoy it. I think we've had played nine times. I think uh, seven of them have been one goal games. One went to a shootout. Another one went to overtime. I mean, it's going to be a going to be a good competitive game. Kelowna comes out playing hard and physical and manages to get on the board first. But it doesn't last long. As Kamloops is quick to tie the game. Tempers begin to rise in the tight checking game and on a broken play in front of the net, a puck slips through the Kelowna netminder. Kelowna continues to battle in the second, but not many scoring chances are had by either team. Finally, Jack wins a faceoff in the offensive zone, and the screened point shot finds a way through. Putting Kelowna back within striking distance with 15 minutes to play. After back-to-back -back penalties, Kamloops makes them pay. At the end of the day, Kamloops punches their ticket to the provincial tournament. While Jack must decide if he wants to return for another try next year or take a different path.
is it working? Skill wise, it couldn't be better. There's no doubt about it. If you if you take a look at the the World Junior Team, it's skilled, but it doesn't necessarily win though, does it? Uh, that's changed in in society, not necessarily just hockey, in, in everything. Everything's camouflaged because you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know, and that spills over into sport. Like the, the skills have never been ever been this good. Uh, and even this Bantam team, their skills were, you know, off the charts as far as they were. If you compare this these guys' skills to the way they were typically 20 years ago, there is no comparison. But the but is, is that they still don't know how to play. Which team would I sooner have? This team? Ultra, ultra skilled, shoot, pass, skate like the wind. Or a team from 20 years ago? I'd probably take the one from 20 years ago that weren't uh, as skilled, but understood the game, uh, weren't so self-centered, played more like a team, played because they loved to play, not because how many goals they were going to get. Or I'd sooner take that team from back when because they had more character. Next time on Our Game, we meet a player that traveled across the world to play hockey in Canada. And Jack faces a crucial decision on whether he'll stay in Kelowna minor hockey or leave to play on an elite academy team.